ஹலோ எவ்ரி ஒன் வெல்கம் டு இந்தியன் அனாட்டமிஸ் சேனல் இன் டுடேஸ் டாபிக் லெட் அஸ் டிஸ்கஸ் அபவுட் த அனாட்டமி ஆஃப் சுப்பீரியர் வினிகேவா சுப்பீரியர் வினிகேவா இஸ் அ மேஜர் வால்வ்லஸ் வெயின் தட் பிளேஸ் அ குரூஷியல் ரூல் இன் டிரான்ஸ்போர்ட்டிங் டி ஆக்சிஜினேட்டட் ஆர் புவர்லி ஆக்சிஜினேட்டட் பிளட் ஃப்ரம் த பாடி பேக் டு த ரைட் ஏட்ரியம் ஆஃப் தி ஹார்ட் த சுப்பீரியர் வினிகேவா இஸ் ரெஸ்பான்சிபிள் ஃபார் ரிசீவிங் த வீனஸ் பிளட் that returns from tissues situated above the diaphragm in this picture we can see the superior vena cava occupying both the superior and middle of the inferior mediastinum the superior and inferior mediastinum are divided by a transverse imaginary plane which runs anteriorly through the level of sternal angle and posteriorly through the disc between t4 and t5 on the other hand The inferior vena cava is responsible for carrying deoxygenated blood back to the heart from the lower region of the body below the diaphragm. Superior vena cava is anatomically divided into first the extrapericardial part and second the intrapericardial part. The extrapericardial part is situated in superior mediastinum and the intrapericardial part is in the middle mediastinum or within the pericardial cavity coming to the dimensions of the superior vena cava the length of the superior vena cava is about 7 cm while the breadth is about 2 cm let us see about the formation of superior vena cava it is formed by the union of right and left brachiocephalic veins at the level of inferior border of the right first costal cartilage the superior vena cava after its formation runs inferiorly and pierces the fibrous pericardium opposite to the right second costal cartilage later the superior vena cava ends or drains into the right atrium at the level of right third costal cartilage in this picture we can see both the extrapericardial and intrapericardial part the dotted lines represents the pericardium coming to the relations of the superior vena cava the anterior relations are sternum first and second intercostal spaces anterior border of the right lung and pleura and right internal thoracic vessels intrapericardial part is also related to the pericardium this picture shows the in situ of thoracic viscera including the superior vena cava and its parts the extrapericardial and the intrapericardial the posterior relations of the superior vena cava are the extra pericardial part is related to the trachea vagus nerve mediastinal surface of right lung and pleura whereas the intra pericardial part is related to the root of the right lung posteriorly on the right side the superior vena cava it is related to right lung and pleura right phrenic nerve and right pericardia cophrenic vessels the pericardia cophrenic vessels are shown with the arrow marks on the left side the superior vena cava is related to brachiocephalic trunk in the upper part and ascending aorta in the lower part coming to the tributaries of superior vena cava right and left brachiocephalic veins which are the formed tributaries of superior vena cava next the azagos vein which opens into the superior vena cava before the superior vena cava pierces the fibrous part of the pericardium which lies opposite to the right second costal cartilage next pericardial veins mediastinal veins and esophageal veins which forms smaller tributaries let us discuss about the development of superior vena cava as we know the superior vena cava is divided into extra pericardial and intra pericardial part the extra pericardial part of the superior vena cava is developed from the lower part of the right anterior cardinal vein whereas the intra pericardial part is developed from the right common cardinal vein or duct of cuvier duct of cuvier is a communication between the anterior and posterior cardinal veins on the basis of development of superior vena cava some developmental anomalies are the duplication or presence of double superior vena cava double superior vena cava is present in about 0.3 to 0.5 percentage in a general population the double superior vena cava can be because of the absence of oblique communication between 
the two anterior cardinal veins producing the right superior vena cava which opens into the right atrium and left superior vena cava forms and drains into the coronary sinus which in turn drains into the right atrium which is commonly found in birds next is the superior vena cava syndrome it is caused by the severe obstruction or occlusion of the superior vena cava and can result in significant morbidity and mortality malignancy is the most common cause of superior vena cava obstruction accounting for approximately 70% of cases however recently the incidence of device related superior vena cava syndrome from central venous catheters and pacemakers or defibrillator leads has been increasing in superior vena cava obstruction the blood flow is diverted to the right atrium through a collateral venous network which can take several weeks to accommodate the usual blood flow of the superior vena cava let us discuss about the anatomical classification of superior vena cava obstruction which includes three levels of obstruction first obstruction of superior vena cava proximal to azygos vein second obstruction at the level of azygos vein and third obstruction distal to the azygos vein first let us see the obstruction of superior vena cava proximal to azygos vein this causes the blood to return to the right atrium through the azygos system and intercostal veins into the superior vena cava this flow chart shows the obstruction of superior vena cava above the azygos vein the venous blood from the upper half of the body is collected through the brachiocephalic vein then into the subclavian vein then right superior intercostal vein and drained into the azygos system of veins from the azygos veins the blood is directed to the superior vena cava and finally into the right atrium the second type of obstruction of superior vena cava at the level of azygos vein the venous blood cannot enter into the superior vena cava through the azygos system of vein and it is forced to utilize other collateral veins leading into the inferior vena cava and from there into the right atrium of the heart in this flow chart we can see the obstruction of superior vena cava at the azygos vein in this type we can see the venous blood collected through the superior vena cava draining into the brachiocephalic vein then subclavian vein internal thoracic vein then entering into the superior epigastric vein from the superior epigastric vein it is directed into the inferior epigastric vein external iliac vein and common iliac vein from the common iliac vein drained into the inferior vena cava and finally draining into the right atrium of the heart the third type of obstruction of superior vena cava distal to the azygos vein in this the venous blood will be redirected via a robust azygos and hemiazygos system in a retrograde manner ultimately into the inferior vena cava hence causing less severe symptoms and finally the inferior vena cava drains the blood into the right atrium of the heart in this flow chart we can see the obstruction of superior vena cava below the azygos system of veins in this type the venous blood is collected through the brachiocephalic vein and drained into the superior vena cava from the superior vena cava it is directed into the azygos system of veins and then into the ascending lumbar vein and collected into the common iliac veins the right and left common iliac vein finally joining to form the inferior vena cava and then drains into the right atrium of the heart apart from the other three types of obstruction of superior vena cava a fourth type of obstruction is observed at the level of brachiocephalic vein it is like superior vena cava obstruction above the azygos vein but without the involvement of superior vena cava in this type the collateral veins formed are multiple in number and include any of the previously listed pathways the flow chart showing the obstruction 
at the level of brachiocephalic veins in this the venous blood is collected through the brachiocephalic veins then into the subclavian vein and collected into the right superior intercostal vein then directed into the azygos system of veins from the azygos veins the blood is collected into the superior vena cava and finally drained into the right atrium of the heart in this video we have discussed all about the superior vena cava its formation relations and its clinical features i hope all of you would have understood in detail which will be helpful for your studies let us be connected for the upcoming videos thank you all